Okay, so to press one of my parts, what I do is I take my die here and I hit it with a little lemon pledge. I learned that from Brian Carpenter. Adds a little lubricity to um, between the surfaces. Then I just uh, put my blank, which is also covered with some pledge. Line up the tooling holes. And I just got little pins that I made out of roofing nails. Pop those in, that keeps the blank in the proper position on the die. Then we go over to the press. And I've already sprayed some pledge on the bottom side of my wear pad here, which is the blue pad. It's just a half inch thick piece of rubber. And I've got some uh, pledge already in there on the bolster. The bolster is the red piece of steel. It's the lower die, essentially. Then, I just slide my die with the blank on in there. Sorry, but it's hard to do this with just uh, one hand working the camera. Ouch. Okay, so now I've got it centered on the uh, bolster. You can see the die in there with the uh, blank on top of it. I've got the blue wear pad fairly lined up. Let me come up here, turn on the power to the pump. There's the pump and the motor. Then I've got to close this valve. This is the valve that allows the pressure to build up. And here's my operating lever. It's connected to the valve on top of the tank. And we just start running the, the uh, bolster up into the rubber box. There is rubber up underneath there. That's a piece of rubber inside that big box. The cycle time's a little bit long on the way up. If this was a real production process, I'd look for a way to shorten the cycle time. But for me, for now, this is okay. It takes about 60 seconds for it to go to the full up. You can see there now where it's starting to get up into the rubber box. As soon as the rubber makes full contact all the way around, we'll notice the pressure starting to come up on the uh, gauge here by the valve. And then it'll quickly spike up to 2,500 pounds. Try to get both the die and the gauge in the same thing. You can hear it going up now. That's my relief valve operating that's making that screeching sound. That's a 2,500 pound relief valve I've got set. I just leave the pressure up on it for a while. Bump it a few times just to keep that pressure on the rubber and let it form that uh, piece pretty well. Then we're gonna relieve the pressure back off. And then this valve, I'm going to open it. What it does is it's connected to a much larger line and it allows, let me turn the pump off. It allows the uh, bolster to, under gravity, come back down more quickly because it's going from underneath the uh, piston up to this larger line and it goes up and just relieves to the tank, goes back up into the tank. So the bolster actually comes down much more quickly than it goes up. Then we can uh, lift the rubber here, slide the hand in, and we pull out our formed part. Let's take it over to the bench and see how we did. Just got to, uh, sometimes it takes a little effort to pry my uh, my pins out. I'm gonna pause this and I'll go get that done. Okay, here's my little pry tool. I just used to all I gotta usually do is just get one nail out, one pin out, and then the other one pops right out. Remove the pin. Got some rags to wipe it off with. And then we can take a look at what we've got here. 
Now, usually up here, the nose needs a little bit of reworking, and I got to do some hand work on that. I usually just take a hammer and I knock those uh, those high spots that you see down, and it's pretty hard to get rid of that with you know with forming tempered material. It's going to just do that, and you'll see also at the bottom of the gullets, there's a little peak there at the bottom of the gullets. Um, what I do is I I work that out by hand with a hammer. I just tap it a little bit with a hammer. And then I put it back in the press and I press it one more time and it usually comes out uh, really nice. And then these points up here, I've got to do a little bit of hand work on. Um, I open that gap up a little bit and then repress it. And I, again, I tap them down and then a little bit of file work, a little bit of hand work. Uh, it comes out pretty flat. That's a 12 inch part. There's about a millimeter. If you put a straight edge from the tip here, down to the base, you'll see about a millimeter of dish in it. Um, and that's just a matter of, you know, the compression along these flanges right here. You can only get so much. And with pressing tempered material, um, that's about the best you can probably get, unless you, uh, what you talked about earlier, what we uh, mentioned earlier with uh, annealing the material, but then you've got the hassle of having to retemper it. Now that little goober on the flange there that's been in there from every press of the part that i pressed and i'm not sure why that's in there it happens in the same spot each time this is the fourth one i pressed this one gets a little tiny one but this one i'm thinking it's just going to need another uh tab there to take that out um, it comes out with a little uh a little hand work um, but and this material was just some uh, some junk material I had laying around. In fact, you can see an extra hole in it there. I didn't realize that hole was there until after I'd cut it out with the router. But that's pretty much uh, what you get on the first pressing. I'm going to hand work this a little bit, and then I'll bring you back, and I'll show you more of what it looks like uh, after the second pressing. Okay, guys, here's the uh, part after the second pressing. I... Uh, as I mentioned, I went in and I tapped those with a hammer. Let's see if we can get this to focus a little bit better. I tapped the gullets with a hammer, knocked them down, and then I repress it. Uh, and it smooths it out quite a bit. A little more handwork, a little bit of filing, and that nose. It's still going to, I mean, I could add I could add three more, four more, however many little gullets in there, and it'll form better. But you don't put any rivets in the first three inches of the nose anyway, so it's not like it's a critical deal. Unless it's a fuel tank, then you might. Um, and sealing it'll be an issue. But uh, that's what we got after the second pressing. I've got a little more magic I can do, and I think I know what's causing this ripple on this flange. Uh, the 40,000s doesn't do that as bad. It doesn't ripple like that. I've pressed parts of it, and it doesn't do it. But I think what's happening here is when the die is when the die is uh, when the part's being pressed in the press, uh, that wear pad is is a half inch thick and it's really really tough rubber. And I think what's happening is the rubber is is not getting all the way down into the corner down here and pressing on the flange on the low edge of the flange. I think it's I think it's it's uncovering off the off the flange material about here and i'm not getting a good compression it's not it's not forcing the rubber's not forcing the flange up against the die to try and compress the material like it should be in that one spot so i've got a couple more tricks i'm going to try uh i'm going to lay some inner tube rubber um, i can put extra pressure in spots by adding another layer or two of rubber and uh, get better results on some things i learned that with my old press so i can probably massage this into shape but Again, even uh, adding, you know, uh, redoing exactly where you want your gullets, those gullets for the tabs, is, um, it'll take that out. Uh, I just left these tabs fairly long, but as the, as the radius gets tighter here, um, see the radius isn't real tight over here, and it's not real tight on the lower part, this is actually the lower part of the nose rib. Um, this radius isn't real tight along through here, but the top's a little bit tighter. There's a little bit more, and right in here is where the, the radius is probably the 
tightest until we get down into here, but then I've added more tabs down there, obviously, on the nose. So I, I think that's where that wrinkle is coming from, and I can get that out of there. It's just a matter of trial and error and, uh, and uh, finding out where you want your rivet patterns and then just putting a slot where um, there's uh, not going to be rivets or where the, yeah, where the rivets are not going to be. Also, this, uh, this notch in the front and uh, these two on the nose here, if I made those, instead of making them a slot, I made them a little more triangular shaped then uh, that slot wouldn't close up so tightly and you'd get a little bit more compression of the material um, around the, uh, the flange around that area. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, and, and I've already done it on this other one, <clears throat> you can see where that nose rib, the, the flanges on the nose on the tip there are kind of uh, radiused. Uh, what I do is I just go over and put them in my uh, on my flat belt sander and I just kind of flatten it out and make it uh, more of just a uh, a taper instead of a, a radius taper whatever you want to call it and also the flanges sometimes the flanges my uh, my template that I use for the uh, for the blank uh, isn't perfect and then during the compression you can see when it when it forms that part you can see that it uh, the flange tends to lengthen between the slots and so it gets you get kind of a waviness. And again, all I do is just take it over to the to the belt sander and uh, and just flatten it out. It'll make it look the appearance look a little bit better. But for just some scrap aluminum I had laying around, I wanted to press these for you guys so that you could get an idea of what uh, what I can do for you. And you know, if we're using good material, this would come out looking a lot better. But again, this was just some scrap I had. You can see the lines on it, and there's extra, like I said, extra holes in it. But um, I'm pretty happy with the results. It's never going to look like uh, the uh, ribs that you had made by the guys that do the annealing and then they put it in the press and press it and then, I mean, that's going to come out perfectly straight. It's going to come out everything, but it's also costing you 50 bucks a rib or whatever you said it was. So um, that's about what I can do for you uh, as far as the nose rib pressing. Again, uh, it does come out a little bit not flat. Uh, let's see if I can get it upside down on the die and uh, shoot the camera through there to give you an idea of uh, I'll back up here and you can see I can press it down a little bit there is a little there's the air gap you can see it there is a little bit of gap there and you can actually take some of that out just by hand bending at the gullets a little bit you know it's not perfect it's not a linear thing but you can you can kind of take it out and make the rib a little bit straighter but that's just a function of, of pressing tempered material you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody that can get that out unless you make a three-dimensional die that's that's uh you know humped in the middle and you know go through a lot of uh, work that way you could probably get that out a little bit but um, for what I'm doing for Prowler and hopefully work for what you need there for your uh, project that'll get you pretty much really in the ballpark for uh, for what you need for ribs and again these problems are really accentuated in the nose ribs your mid ribs and anything with a more gentle curve you're not going to see um, near the issues but uh, on these really tight bends that's just what tempered material does so I clean it up like I said with a hand with we'll do some hand work filing uh, with a hammer tapping it down and you can get it you know pretty cleaned up it'll look pretty decent and uh, if I was gonna do this I'd probably hit this with a scotch bright wheel and then uh, put some uh, some green uh, primer on it and uh, probably call it good so I'm going to go get this uh, video uh, cleaned up and uh, see if I can get this to you guys and see what you think. And if you want, you can send me your address and I'll, uh, I'll send these blanks to you so you can have them in your hand and take a look at them and uh, see what you think. Thanks, guys.